Hey there, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and welcome back to another Multiphonics tutorial. In this video, we'll be taking a look at filtering inside of Multiphonics using the state variable filter and the new ladder filter module. Filtering, as you probably know, is a pretty core part of synthesis. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at filters, different filter types, talking about what they are and how they work, and giving you a few ideas that you can take with you on your modular patching adventures. So with that, let's dive right in. In this video, we're going to be exploring everything you need to know to understand the basics of filtering inside of Multiphonics, and by the end of it, you'll be able to take a raw saw waveform and turn it into something way cooler like this. First up, let's talk about the state variable filter to go over the different available filter types inside of Multiphonics. To start things off here, we're routing just a basic saw waveform through the state variable filter. We'll set the Q or resonance or quality all the way down and the growl all the way down to zero and open up the cutoff all the way. The state variable filter in Multiphonics is really useful because it allows you to select from a bunch of different filter types. First up, if we just use the direct output, we're getting a low pass filter. A low pass filter allows frequencies lower than the cutoff point to pass through, hence the name low pass. So if we take a look at this and play a saw waveform through it, we'll see just the raw saw. And if we start filtering this down by dropping the cutoff, we'll notice only frequencies lower than the cutoff point pass through. Let's check out a different filter type. If we change this connection to the band pass output, now only frequencies within the band and near the cutoff point are going to pass through. So it is a band pass. If we set the cutoff down to the middle, we'll see that this kind of looks like a triangle of frequencies. This is gonna be much more apparent if we increase the Q or resonance. There, we've got a very distinct peak type slope going on to the filter. The final filter type to know about is the high pass filter, which allows frequencies higher than the cutoff point to pass through. So if we drop this all the way down, we'll see the entire saw waveform coming through. And as we start to bring it up, we'll notice the lower frequencies start to get cut out. And again, it'll be much more pronounced with an increased resonance. If you take a look at the state variable filter, you might notice that there is no notch or band stop filter mode, but it's easy to get one. To do that, we'll use the morph knob here to blend between a low pass and a high pass and set the factor to 100% and 100%. Now, if we take a look and sweep around with the cutoff frequency, we'll notice a notch being taken out of the frequency spectrum. One thing to know about with filtering is the ability to key track the filter. In this case, we've got a sequence that spans over about two octaves. And if we take a listen with a fixed filter cutoff point and a medium resonance, the low notes sound pretty powerful, but the high notes definitely dip off a bit. One useful thing to do with a filter is to key track it. In this case, we'll take the pitch CV, which is coming out from this sample and hold here, and feed that into the filter cutoff modulation. Now, with 0%, we're not going to get any movement. But as we start increasing this, it's going to increase the amount of key tracking happening with the filter. So that filter cutoff is following where the notes are. In this case, it's bipolar, so the lower notes sound a bit darker, and the higher notes are opened up a little bit more. If we invert this, the high notes are darker and the low notes are a bit more open. Tracking the filter cutoff based on the pitch is a really useful trick to know about, especially if you're doing things like sequences, arpeggios, or really fast, complex leads, and you want to maintain a pretty stable relationship between the filter cutoff and the frequency of the note. By now, you probably understand that the cutoff affects where the filter cuts off at. But let's take a moment to take a look at the Q or resonance control, also known as the quality control. The Q is going to add an emphasis at the cutoff point. If we have a pretty high Q, this becomes very obvious. And we can see the higher the Q, the more pronounced that resonance is. With a lower Q, it's not as apparent, and with no Q, 
it's really just undetectable. One interesting idea with the filter is to use the cue to cause the filter to self-oscillate, meaning the filter starts to output an oscillating sine wave tone even when there's no input connected. A fair warning before you do this though, this can be pretty loud and pretty aggressive, so be careful before you proceed with this. Making the filter self-oscillate is really straightforward. Let's just disconnect the input here and wire the output directly to the output. Now we'll start increasing the cue and eventually, We'll cause it to self-oscillate there, and we can move the cutoff to change the pitch. This can be a pretty interesting thing to try, especially if you start key tracking it or basing it on a CV sequencer or something like that. You can cause some really interesting alien distorted textures to start happening with your sequences or your patches, and it's just kind of a cool little trick and effect to try out in general. Let's move on and take a look at the ladder filter module. This is a lot like the state variable filter, but it has a few key differences. One of the first and most obvious ones you'll notice is that this is only a low pass filter, whereas the state variable filter has different filter types. The other key difference is that the ladder filter allows you to dial in the slope of the filter or how steep the fall off of frequencies is from the cutoff point. So we can go all the way from six decibels per octave up to a more aggressive 24 decibels per octave. Let's feed the sequence through this and move the cutoff around to see how this impacts the sound. Here we can see even at the lowest cutoff frequency, we're still getting a pretty good amount of frequencies leaking through. Now let's start increasing the slope to about halfway. We'll see that fall off is much steeper. Finally, let's turn it up all the way to 24 decibels per octave and here we can see there's a very significant fall off after the cutoff frequency. Like the state variable filter, the ladder filter also features a resonance control, which is the same as the Q control in the state variable filter. So we can use that to create a resonant frequency around the cutoff point. And this is capable of self oscillating as well. Finally, with the ladder filter, we have the drive control, which allows us to add an aggressive, saturated drive to the filter. This can be really fun to mess with and is really nice with lower filter slopes because it provides a very throaty, distinct, kind of grungy sound. One final thing of note with the ladder filter is as you increase the resonance, you might notice the volume of your signal ducks down a little bit. So to compensate for this, you can use the output gain control here to add up to 20 additional decibels of gain to the output signal from the ladder filter module. The filters in Multiphonics offer a lot of modulation inputs. Here we can modulate the cutoff with up to four different connections, the slope with two different connections, the resonance with two connections, and the drive with two connections, as well as an FM input. So we can use different modules and things to modulate these different parameters to create much more interesting filtering effects. Let's start off by using a sample and hold to modulate the filter's cutoff here. Let's increase the slope a little bit and see what we can get. Let's drop the resonance and then use an LFO to increase the amount of resonance. Let's use the sample and hold to control the drive as well. And then let's maybe use the saw wave output to add some FM to the filter. And that is a look at filtering inside of Multiphonics using the state variable filter and the new ladder filter module. There are a lot of different ideas you could explore from here, but we'll leave that part up to you. For more Multiphonics tutorials just like this one, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. And for more information on Multiphonics or to try it for yourself today, you can head over to AppliedAcoustics.com.